Now we go to the last presentation of Professor Fabio Moises Liz Dantas, who will talk about nanotechnology applied to health experiences in the National Institute of Technology. Professor Fabio Dantas has graduation in chemical engineering by the chemical industry at Rio, master's and doctorate in science, technology and polymers by Federal University in Rio, 11 years of experience in, in R&D for the productive sector. He worked for eight years in the Technology Institute in Farmanguinhos in Fio Cruz and has been developing several products for AIDS and negle neglected diseases. Main focus of his work at INT was the transfer of technology and works in biopolymers, working with structure modification of polyacrylic acid to produce prodrugs, macromoleculars, lactic acid and copolymers, controlled release, structural modification of biopolymers, and that are adhesive. He's working with development and technology transfer for the company. Highlighting with USP, FF, and CBPF, and UFRJ. Professor has 20 minutes. Thank you. First of all, I would like to thank the coordination of the event for this opportunity to be to present some of our papers, our works of the National Institute of Technology. I was going to start with the development of the strong development of nanotechnology, but Professor Silvia has already spoken about it, has already mentioned it. I only would like to uh, underline the exponential growth which I made at, made at the Web of Science, I made a search, and I would like to highlight that when there is a development, a new, technique com a new technique comes to the knowledge of the academy, it takes some time to, to make companies abs absorb this knowledge, absorb this knowledge. In the case of nanotechnology, we may observe that it was parallel. The academy issue in terms of product development as well as the de uh, development and research of nanoparticles, for instance, a good part of de developing a link to health have to do with nanoparticles in general. This is what I would like to highlight in this context. UNT, INT, it belongs to the Ministry of Science and Technology. We're located at Mawa Square, for those who don't know. And it is almost 90 years old and has participated in, te in the country's technology and also in nanotechnology, of course. It's a multidisciplinary center. Its main feature is to uh, be interconnected, interconnecting several areas, which is interesting for the development of nanotechnology. This is not a single science, as was said in several speeches. Uh, this will be observed that several areas come together to have for a development. INT, we have two strong areas, which are nanocomposites and nanoparticles. And we also work in other air developing areas. This month is very special because we are inaugurating our nanomaterial characterization laboratory. And we We'll have two electronic scanning microscopes, an XPS, and two transmission ones, which are composing the rest of the infrastructure. We will have a good capacity 
of developing of the de of development. I highlighted six pro projects that are developed there. I will mention only two of them, and deeply these two last ones. The first project of the researcher Maris Varela, who's a, who's a here, uh, which is the coating of titanium by implant uh, to have more osteo integration in these implants. This is an example of osteo integration. Strong, you see the penetration of the bone. Another important paper that was mentioned by Kawon, we have a similar work with Jose Carlos da Rocha, which is quite advanced, which is the production of drinking water. He made nanomembranes, which uh, give high potability and low cost. Uh, he's receiving resources from the Science and Technology Ministry. To, de to develop prototypes in this area. It's quite advanced. Here I would like to focus our project, which is older and was originated in the Institute of Farmanguinhos. Pharma Pharma uh, and when I moved to INT in 2004, I continued to develop it. We have uh, significant evolution of this technology. I will explain you some details, but would like to explain the large advantages of them, of it. The system, we cannot hear. Okay. This system is based uh, as a, in biopolymers have a degradation, degradation of lactic acid, which is absorbed by or, the organism. We have a system of low toxicity, which are the advantages. High biocompatibility by the polymer, uh, prolonged and action and pulmonary delivery because for t TB treatment, this is the main site of development of this disease, which is the pulmonary disease. We developed a system that enables the release of the drug in a prolonged way and vectorized by macrophiles uh, and the, uh, by means of aerosol formulation. Uh, uh, we also have uh, resolubilization. Uh, this is why we are able to formulate aerosols easily without active tensoactive agents. We have the optimization of the stability. When we pronounce nanoparticles, we end up by making a, creating a layer, and there is an isolation of the drug and its optimization is a result of it, flexibility of its formulation. It's in reality a technological platform. The, pro the project is for TB, but maybe tomorrow it can be for pulmonary cancer, lung cancer or asthma or something else. Some examples, details about technology, there are many cards to work with. Working with nanoparticles, we have several structures that have differentiated and, uh, actions and properties. Currently at INT, we work with uh, nanogels and nanocapsules. Capsules. Focusing the the main principles of the for the development of the product product. We bring nanoparticles to lungs so they can have their action, therapeutic action. We want to reach the alveolus where the, de uh, the disease is developing. So the smaller particles, 
one micron lower, we have a penetration and accumulation in the system. Another issue is that the depuration filtering of the lung system follows these mechanisms. The alveolar issue, which is, has the ma its main interest, has a surface transport during breathing, breathing that has a ciliary clearance, absorption in, in, in blood, knowing that the development of TB happens inside macrophages, uh, we, ha we developed a particle that penetrates in the lungs until the alveolus, stimulating the macrophage, macrophages uh, phagocytosis. And within the macrophages, there is the f release of this medicine. The process of production of these nanoparticles is classical and simple, only one step. This reduces the cost of this product. And uh, we have uh, some distribution data of particles. We can work uh, several parameters. Actually, the process is simple, but it needs to have uh, a know-how know -how of variables. We work uh, with about 15 variables. And depending on how you manipulate them, you can have uh, very tiny particles, and some other particles can have 1,000 nanometers. Each system has a special application. The one nano can reach the lymph system, lymphatic system according to the application you wish. It's a technological platform. Uh, so this manipulation of the size gives us a, possibility, a large possibility to work with this platform. Here we have a transmission example. This is a kind of a nanoparticle, which is multi, has multi-core, this multi-core structure. Here we see the release that is releasing crystals that prove the encapsulation. Here we have uh, a work that shows us phagocytosis. You see the white dots. Uh, the, we see the internalization of these particles, almost no white dots. Uh, this uh, work was made by Professor Anna Paula from the USP University in odontology. Very interesting work. These are the phagocytosis results. We have we used several formulas. I would like to highlight that these formulations we obtained, uh, these products were, had a ver were very successful. And depending on the process, we have the same polymeric structure. Depending on the process, we have uh, different biological responses. So for instance, the nanoparticles N1 to N3, we observe a large phagocytosis capacity. And from between N7 and N9, we don't have that. This uh, gives me the this explains me that I have a, an internal release, or I can have an external release. The apoptose rate was only one system that did not work. The remaining ones were quite good, were working quite well. And then the alginate, which is the second material. We use the first material is PLA, our main use. And we started uh, studies with alginate. They were demanded by Professor Maria Costa Leon from the chemistry school of the University of Rio for application as a food supplement. Which are the advantage of nanotechnology in these cases? Uh, we have the taste make mask because it does not involve the formulation of these supplements. Uh, for the applications as a re 
positioning uh, as like a, an athlete's drinks or people who do diets, the, the taste is very bad. So if you start looking in the market, generally these products are develop are formulated with with citric products because citrates citric citrates mask the flavor you will never see pear apple or or strawberry flavors because this reduces the formulation market of these products the nanostructure is eliminates the sandy mouth sensation adenosity a very small part particle uh, enables the elimination of this uh, uh, sand flavor, which is common in some products. Uh, the flexibility in the formulation is much larger. The system also r enables a controlled release and has muco adhesivity and bioadhesion in the mucine. of the gastrointestinal system and the stability for salts uh, such as uh, iron 2 that oxidate lightly to iron 3 iron 2 gives the best response in terms of nutrition and also the technology technology platform that enables uh, pre applications in other areas such as the release of delivery of controlled release of medicine. This system, the production part is very similar to the previous one. Also, it also involves emulsification, but this is another technique where we have the diffusion of solvents. And this gives a, a shock of stability in the system, enabling the production of uh, nanoparticle systems. The alginate uh, has this structure because it's a copolymer of gluronic acid to manuronic acids. He has this complexization capacity with NOx uh, higher than one. And we can see that these structures we call egg box, egg box uh, is where the whole properties of the alginate appear. We can, in the case of this project, only use it as a, a food supplement, but we can also link other molecules with several uh, interpretations. Here I have a, a distribution of particles, nanoparticles, with small dimensions. This is in a a solution, but when we do the lyophilization, we observe a, a strong aggre aggregation. We work with nanogelis. It's difficult to stabilize it, nanogelis, uh, after use. But since the product is used for solution, be worked in a solution, the growth uh, that is observed have has particles of 500 nanos. It's not significant right now. And this is a release study for gastric release. It's very slow. The release is very slow. And we can observe that in the enteric system, the speed is much faster uh, if compared to the gastric system. The product goes to the region where uh, absorption is needed. That's what I wanted to tell you. I'm available for anything. Thank you for your kind attention.